Greg, it's Ross. Long time no talk. How are you, buddy? Ross, what's happening, my friend? So I am so fired up to talk about these games with you. And I was just telling the guys, I literally have never had you on my show and not had you say multiple things I didn't know, didn't realize, and were of interest in, to me. So let's just let's go through them. So let's start Colts Texans. Give me the most interesting thing about that game to you. I'll say two things. One is is Colts D, Texans O, and I think the Colts have done a really good job in recent weeks and certainly when they played the Texans the last time, week 14, with pressure concepts. We don't think of the Colts as a high-percentage blitz defense, but they've done a really good job with pressure concepts, causing problems not only for the protection but for Deshaun Watson. The second thing I'd say is look for Naheem Hines as a pass receiver for the Colts. They've increased his role in that regard as the years progressed. He's very, very difficult as a matchup player, both in the backfield and detached from the formation. So I got questions on both these quarterbacks, actually, as a follow-up. Number one, for Deshaun Watson, he took the most sacks in the NFL by far. Yep. Do you think that that is something that he will continue to improve upon or is that a red flag that has you really concerned? My guess is he'll continue to improve because I think the, some of the reasons for that are fixable and correctable. Uh, I think that his tendency to hold the ball too long is correctable, and I think his understanding of where pressure is coming from is correctable. He struggles with both of those things right now. As for Andrew Luck, is he a different player than he was before, and if so, how? Before the injury? Yes. Uh, I think he's different because of the nature of the offense and how he's being coached. He's now a much more rhythmic player. The ball comes out. That's part of the offensive design. That's intentional. So you don't see him holding the ball as long. You don't see as many second reaction plays, which are a function of the fact that the design of the offense presents quicker, defined reads and throws. All right, let's move on to Saturday night. Cowboys and the Seahawks. What's the most interesting aspect of this matchup behind the scenes? I would say from a profile perspective, both teams are somewhat similar. I think they want to run the football. They do it a little bit differently. The Seahawks do it out of shotgun inside zone. We know what the Cowboys do with Zeke. It's a very multiple run game. I think both quarterbacks have second reaction ability, and I think both teams rely on that, particularly in critical longer yardage situations. I would say that two things are factors in this game. The Seahawks' pass protection could be an issue. They've got some injuries along the O-line. They've had to make some changes and adjustments. And I think the Cowboys are very, very good uh, with their pass rush. And then I think for the Cowboys' offense, two players stand out to me that are critical. Cole Beasley we know about. But the player who got some snaps this past week against the Giants and I think can become important as a drive sustainer is Tavon Austin. If you would have told me a couple years ago that in 2019 I'd be hosting the Dan Patrick show and Greg Cosell would say Tavon Austin's important in a playoff game, I would not <laughs> have believed you. That's unbelievable. Is it too simplistic, Greg, for me to say I think this is a close, low-scoring game, and as a result I'm going to go with Russell Wilson and the Seahawks because he comes through in the clutch – and Dak doesn't. I mean, I, I know that's overly simplistic. Right. But when you watch the tape, Greg, do you feel like you can see experience? I know it's tough because you're just watching videotape, but could you feel like you can see guys that are more comfortable late in games than others? Uh, I don't want to answer that yes, because I, I think I'd be just making that up. But I think that what you're saying is the way the teams are built to a certain extent. When you're going to run the ball and play good defense, the expectation more often than not is that the games will be lower scoring and, and therefore closer. I think that the Seahawks feel very good about Russell Wilson's ability not only to connect on shot plays off their run action, but in his second reaction ability. Just look what he did last week to hit lock it to set them up for a field goal. He's done that quite a bit this year. Obviously, Prescott made that great throw last week at the end of the game, but I think that overall, the Seahawks feel very comfortable with their profile. The Cowboys have been very inconsistent in that regard, so my guess is they feel less comfortable. I think I saw a stat. I can't remember what it was. Russell Wilson either was the only guy that didn't miss a snap this year or hasn't missed a, a snap in seven years, which given his style is just insane I, I just can't believe he has not 
missed a game yet. Let's get to the Sunday 1 o'clock game. I don't picture that being the case with Lamar Jackson. I think he's actually had to come out of a couple of games this year. Here's what intrigues me about this one, Greg. It's tough to stop this Ravens rushing attack, especially because you're not familiar with it. You're not used to a lot of the concepts they're using. The Chargers just played them two Correct. weeks ago. How much do you think that that helps them, Greg? I think it does help, and I think that the Ravens have some distinct profiles in their run game. They line up in pistol. When Edwards is in the game, they tend to run a lot of dive action because he's a straight line kind of linear runner. When Kenneth Dixon is in the game in the pistol, they tend to run more gap scheme runs. I think they have a distinct profile. Um, Jackson is obviously very difficult to defend in the run game. You can't play with two, sa two deep safeties. You need to get that extra player in the box to get that extra gap. They're a dime defense the Chargers which gives them more athleticism on the field Jackson obviously has concerns as a passer at this point he leaves a lot of throws on the field he doesn't see the field particularly well right now and he's very scattershot so there's a balance there and I think their defense is what really helps them play the way they do and I know you were at that first matchup which was just a couple of weeks ago and they really caused some problems in pass protection for the Chargers and that to me is a little bit of a concern for the Chargers overall this game for sure but I think their O-line is a little bit of a concern Rivers can often compensate for that but there are sometimes he can't and and if I were the Chargers I would come out with empty sets I'd go no huddle I'd define everything for Phillip as quickly as possible and I'd make it difficult for the Ravens to show their blitzes you know what I think that's a really good point Greg because they ran a middle linebacker defensive tackle stunt a number and of times and they killed him the, the, the Chargers never adjusted to it. And that, to me, Greg, is... It's a is hard the, deal, Ross. You know that. It's a hard deal. It's, it's very hard, but also in pro football, Greg, and you know this, if they do it once and it works, they're definitely going to do it again. So when you go off to the side, you got to say, hey, look, when that middle linebacker's walked up, He's going to try to pick. The running back's got to come up and stone him right there on the line of scrimmage. The guard has to be expecting the contact and be willing to accept it from the middle. I mean, it just it, it seemed like they were surprised by it every time, Greg. Yeah, and I'm not going to dispute what you said. You know, you know better than I being on a sideline and discussing it, but I think that's a tough deal because when you sort of get that that uh, linebacker up in the A-gap like that, the back obviously is going to respond to him. But then when you do those those picks, it is really difficult for a guard or a center. So it's I'm anxious to see how they respond to it this week. So you talked about Lamar Jackson. Just the last thing on him. Did you see enough progress the last few weeks to be bullish on what he can do in the postseason and moving forward in the next year in his career. Well, no, I think, to be honest with you, I think you got it with him. He's not at that point yet. He needs an offseason now. He's not a very good passer. It comes down to the conversation about balance. Can you run this offense? Can you truly have an offense with a quarterback who runs as much as he does? My answer to that would be no, but I think that doesn't matter right now. You're playing this out for this season. They want to win a Super Bowl. I don't think he can do this over the course of a long career. He's going to have to become a better passer. Talking with my buddy Greg Cosell in his office, the NFL Films executive producer of the NFL Matchup Show. Greg, can you confirm that your office is still not in a basement? <laughs> no, it's, it's not actually, but okay, I do have a decent-sized screen here, Ross, which is nice. Yeah, okay, because Fritzy, Fritzy in his head said, well, Greg, Greg's been watching film in his basement at NFL Films for 40 years. Fritz, Fritzy was convinced that you can only watch film in a basement. No, no, it's, it's it's a real office. It's actually not as big as maybe some people might think. It's actually pretty small, but, uh, you know, I have what I need. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple man, Ross. <laughs> so let's get into the Eagles and the Bears. I got to tell you, Greg, I've been skeptical of Trubisky all year. The last couple games, a lot of the throws he's made, some of the third down conversions, he's, yeah. he's, start, he's starting to win me over, Greg. Well, that's critical. You just hit on what's critical third down. Uh, now, their offense is, is we, obviously, it's a very interesting mix of Matt Nagy trying to do a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things, you know, cool schemes and different concepts, but then it's also a mix of, of very simple, basic concepts to help Trubisky at this point in his development. One thing that really stands out on film when you watch them is how well and consistently they work to the boundary, to the short side of the field, because that defines the reads. Very often, it's just two 
two-man route concepts and combinations to the boundary. And Tariq Cohen is almost always one of those boundary receivers, and he's a very difficult matchup. He is so fun to watch. I'm going to miss Darren Sproles whenever he retires. I think Tariq Cohen, Greg, might be my new Darren Sproles. Uh, uh, well, yeah, he's very similar. It's interesting. Both guys are playing in this game, and you're going to see similar concepts from both teams in, in the past game. Both players line up to the boundary, and both players cause problems for man coverage because a lot of the, the way the NFL has evolved in terms of coverage is even if you're playing a zone concept, most teams will man up to the short side of the field. And both Tariq Cohen and Darren Sproles cause problems in the past game, whether they're offset in the backfield or whether they're detached from the formation. All right, so Greg, we've got a poll question, and I'm just curious. The poll question is the team playing this weekend that we think has the least chance to go on a run. But I'll oh, give you, you You're can, not going to really ask me that, well, are you? I'll, I'll give you the opposite, Greg. I'll give you the opposite. Who's playing this weekend that based on your videotape study throughout the year, which, which of these teams do you think is best prepared to kind of make a run here over these next two or three games? Well, I'm really bad at this, but I'm going to give you an answer, but I'm really bad at this because I can give you five reasons, you know, either way, you know that, <laughs> right. from watching tape, particularly when teams have definable strengths and weaknesses. I'm never surprised when a weakness or a flaw shows up in a, in a playoff game. Right. But the team that I'm most fascinated with as we head to the playoffs are the Indianapolis Colts. Wow. That is really you know, interesting. I'm not sitting here telling you they're going to the Super Bowl, but I – I think too that late. Was, I already put it on Twitter. Greg Cosell says Colts okay. win the Super Bowl. But I think that their D coordinator, Matt Eberflus, has done an outstanding job with what most people would say is not high level talent with his schemes, his concepts, a ton of what we call gap exchange on the defensive line. You know all about that and how difficult that can be for offensive linemen to deal with. And, and I think he's really done a good job. Now, they could stop at some point just because of the talent, but I, I really like the Colts. Greg, I really like getting a chance to talk with you. Thank you so much for the time, as always. Appreciate it, Ross. Thanks for having me. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.